Panasonic has just announced the Panasonic Lumix GH5 Mark II, as well as a development announcement for the Lumix GH6. If you want to learn about the GH6, click the link up here. I've got a short video on it. There's not a whole lot of info, but what there is, we've got. But this video is about the GH5 Mark II. We'll talk about what's new, what's different, and how it compares to the original GH5. In the first part of this video, I'm gonna take you line by line through a comparison chart showing the differences between the Lumix GH5 Mark II and the original Lumix GH5. Then in the second part, we're gonna get into the menu system and show off some of the features that aren't included in the charts, but are things that you're definitely gonna to wanna to know about of the new GH5 Mark II. Let's get started by talking about the sensor. It is effectively the same 20.3 megapixel sensor, however the GH5 Mark II features an anti-reflective coating on the sensor which minimizes flares in certain shooting situations. So if you ever found yourself with the GH5 where a bright point of light like a lamp post or something like that was shining directly into the lens and causing a flare on the sensor itself, this should minimize that. The image stabilization has been improved from 5 stops to 6.5 stops and Vlog L, still with 12 stops of dynamic range, is now included. This means there's no more software update that you have to add to the camera separately. Vlog is included. Next, let's get into recording formats. If you're shooting in C4K, that's Cinema 4K, also called DCI, that's the resolution of 4096 by 2160 in a 17 by 9 aspect ratio, so a little bit wider than Ultra HD or our standard 4K that we usually think of, you can now shoot in a higher frame rate than you could before. If you want to shoot at 422 10-bit, that's the highest quality possible internally, then you can now shoot at 29.97 frames per second and 25 frames per second. Previously, you were limited to 24 and 23.98. You can also shoot C4K at 60p and 50p if you want to shoot in 420 10-bit mode. Previously, you couldn't shoot in 60 or 50p in C4K at all. In standard 4K in 420 10-bit, you can also now shoot in 60p and 50p. For anamorphic shooters out there, you can now shoot in 4K, 420, 10-bit at 50p. VFR or variable frame rate fans are gonna have something to celebrate here. You can now shoot up to 60 frames per second in C4K mode, as well as up to 50 frames per second in 4K anamorphic mode. Next up, the GH5 has always been able to output 422, 10-bit video over the HDMI port. However, if you got into the higher frame rate of 60p, you could no longer record internally while simultaneously outputting 60p over the HDMI port. That limitation has now been lifted. You can simultaneously record internally while outputting 4K or Cinema 4K 422 10 bit video at up to 60 frames per second. Next up, there's a couple new photo styles that are included. In addition to the Vlog L that is now shipping, there's also a classic Neo and a new monochrome look built into the camera. Additionally, you have Cinelike D2 and Cinelike V2. These are color profiles that are meant to look more cinematic without having to do any color grading. And these new versions, version two, match what's in the S5 and the S1H. The USB 3.1 port has seen a nice upgrade. It is now a PD port for power delivery. That means that you can not only charge the camera over USB, you can actually power the camera from an external battery pack. Next up is a totally new feature, the ability to live stream from the camera itself. Where would you use this? Well, imagine you're a wedding photographer or cinematographer and your client wants you to live stream the wedding. You can now take a Lumix GH5 Mark II and with no additional hardware, live stream that event for them. You're gonna tether it to your phone and use the app on your phone to control it. With a future firmware update, you'll be able to live stream over a wired connection from your camera and you'll be able to turn your GH5 Mark II into an IP camera using the RTSP protocol. What this means effectively is that you can put a camera anywhere on a local network and get a very high quality stream from that camera to anywhere else on the network. Think of it like a really, really long SDI cable. And that's coming in a firmware update later in the year. Next, let's talk about autofocus. Because of the new Venus engine in the camera, you now have far better autofocus than you had with the GH5, bringing it up to par with the Lumix BGH1 or the S5. You're also gaining head, body, and animal recognition in addition to face and eye recognition. The Live Viewfinder, or LVF, is now refreshing at 120 hertz, meaning that everything you see through the viewfinder will look even smoother than before. The LCD panel itself has the same rotation as the GH5, and it's actually a tiny bit smaller, but it is higher resolution, giving you a much better picture. It's also easier to see in bright light. The GH5 Mark II is using the same new higher capacity battery as the S5, which I'll remind you is also backwards compatible to the original GH batteries. So if you have a bag full of batteries for your GH5, those same batteries will work in the GH5 Mark II. That concludes the charts that I wanted to show you. Now let's dive into the menu system. 
The first thing I want to jump into has to do with using adapted or manual lenses on your GH5 Mark II. If you're using a lens that doesn't have electronic contacts on it, then the camera has no idea what the lens is. And while that may not matter for a lot of situations when it comes to stabilization, it matters very much. How the stabilized sensor moves will depend greatly depending on the focal length of the lens. And if you're using an anamorphic lens, then it matters even more. You have to program in not just the focal length, but also the distortion or squeeze ratio of your anamorphic lens. Today I've got a Sirui 50 millimeter anamorphic lens on here with a 1.33x squeeze, and I'll be able to now on the GH5 Mark II dial that into the settings. So let's have a look at that. From the cinema menu, if you go to the others menu, you'll find image stabilizer. From here, there's a couple things I wanna show you. Under lens information, you can now program in individual lenses. So here I've got under lens one, the Sirui 35 millimeter, and under lens two, the Sirui 50 millimeter. You'll notice up here that the actual focal length of that lens has been programmed in as well. Now, if I go up to the anamorphic stabilization, I can now set stabilization depending on the squeeze ratio of that lens, in this case, 1.33. That's something that's totally new to the GH5 Mark II. Next up is a simple feature that I absolutely love that came in first on the Lumix S1H and has been getting added to more and more of the Lumix cameras, and that is the red frame recording indicator in the camera. Yes, let me show you where that is. In the menu, under the gear menu, if you scroll to monitor display video, you'll find the red record frame indicator, and you'll see that I already have it on. What this means is when I start recording, you'll see a red box around the entire frame showing me that I'm recording. Another new feature is the frame marker indicator. This allows you to have an outline on the screen indicating what aspect ratio you might ultimately be delivering in. So if you're shooting for a 235 or square or nine by 16 for social media, you can now have that frame indicator on the camera while you're shooting. Under the gear menu, on the second set of monitor display options, under the first page of that, you'll find the new frame marker. You'll see that I currently have it set to on, but let's take a look at the options. From here, I can choose a frame aspect ratio from 239 through a variety of options all the way down to nine by 16 vertical. I currently have it set to 235 because I'm actually shooting with an anamorphic lens, but the image on screen is already de-squeezed. This lens, when it's set to 1.33X and a 16 by nine aspect ratio, actually gives me a 2.35 to one aspect ratio. So I'm seeing a blue box around the entire image with no part of the image being cropped out. But what if I change that? Let's say I wanna shoot with this same setup but I wanna set it for a social media push at nine by 16. If I scroll down to that, you'll now see how the image is cropped on the LCD, showing me the entire scene, but showing me exactly what part of the image would be used if I were to center crop it. Obviously, once you're in post, you have the ability to move that around. In there, I have other options, such as the ability to change the color of the frame and change how much of the image is masked out behind it. Next up is vertical position information. Do you want the metadata written into the file that tells your NLE whether you're holding the camera vertically or horizontally or not? Let me show you how to turn that on. Under the gear menu, and then at the bottom under lens others, at the bottom of that, you'll find vertical position info video on or off. If this is on and you're shooting the camera vertically, then that metadata gets written to the file. And when you load those files into your NLE, they show up as vertical videos. If you turn it off, then they will load as horizontal. Why would you want that off? Well, what if you're mounting the camera in an overhead type environment, straight down? Is the camera vertical or horizontal? The camera might not know and it might get it wrong, in which case those files would show up incorrectly in your NLE. This way you can define whether that metadata is saved in the file or not. Now that there's even more recording format options in the camera, this means that the list of recording formats to choose from is really big. So you now have the ability to filter through that list to help you find exactly the format you're looking for and to save some of those as favorites into your own custom list. Let's have a look. Under the video, then image format menu, where you see your record quality list, you'll see here that we now have six pages of options to choose from. If you wanna filter these, press the display button. And from here, you can choose to filter by any of these options. For example, let's say I want to see only options that allow me to shoot at 2398, and I want to shoot at Cinema 4K. As you can see from there, we have three results, three different options that we can shoot at. I'll hit the display button to back out of here, and there's the three options. From there, if I want to save one of these, I can tap the Q button to add it to my list. Once that's added to my list, you'll see here that you have a record quality My List that will show you just the options that you've added there. Next up is the Luminance Spot Meter. This is an absolutely incredible feature. If you're shooting log, combining the luminance spot meter with the zebras is a total game changer. Let me show you first how to turn this on. 
Under the gear menu, the first page of monitor displays on the second page of that, you'll find luminance spot meter. It's just on or off. To learn how to use this, however, I've done a complete separate video based off of the S5 that now has the exact same features here in the GH5 Mark II. I encourage you to watch that one for sure. I'll link to it at the end of this video as well as down below. The last thing I wanna show you on here is actually a display mode on the LCD itself. If you're shooting with an external monitor, then the LCD on the camera is not really necessary to see what the camera sees. So now we can flip it into a mode where we see a lot more information about our shooting formats directly on the LCD. When you press the display button to cycle through the options, you'll end up on that page there. This is taken straight from the S1H and it is awesome. If you're using an external display or external recorder, then this is huge. Next, I wanna talk a little bit more about the Venus engine. While the sensor itself is largely the same as the one that was in the GH5, the Venus engine is much, much more advanced. And this allows the camera to do many more powerful things, which is why, and I'll point this out now for anyone who's watching this thinking, well, how come my GH5 can't get all these features? This is why the GH5 can't get all these features. This new engine is much more powerful, allowing this camera to do all the things that we've just talked about that could never be done on the GH5. Now, the GH5 has had a really good long run and it's still a great camera. However, it has hit some limits. There are certain things you just can't do without more raw power. And the Venus engine in this camera gives that to us. It gives us a lot more features today, as well as the possibility of adding more features in the years to come, just as the GH5 has had. In general, just look at it this way. The engine behind everything that the camera does is now a lot more powerful and a lot more capable. Next, let's talk a little bit about what's coming in the future, because it wouldn't be a Panasonic Lumix announcement without also announcing what's coming next, to the same body via firmware update. We've already talked about one of them. You'll get the ability to live stream over a wired connection, as well as turning your camera into an IP camera, streaming over a local network using RTP or RTSP. You're also gonna get the ability to do live compositing. This means that if you're doing a bulb or long exposure photo, you'll see the photo building up over time on the back of the camera. For fans of manual focusing using the drive-by-wire lenses, there is a new focus ring control that is built into the GH5 Mark II that will require some firmware updates to the lenses that'll be coming within the next few months. For example, with this 10 to 25 millimeter lens here, you will be able to set inside of the camera how much of a focus ring rotation you have to do to focus from the closest to the farthest focusing distance. This is a really great feature, especially if you're using any kind of focus control system with your electronic lenses. Finally, let's talk about pricing. The camera's coming in at $1699.99, okay, $1,700 US dollars. And for ordering information, I encourage you to visit my website, photojoseph.com slash GH52, where you can learn all about that as well as read the full press release and look at some more specs and availability options there. Thanks for watching. And of course, if you haven't seen the GH6 video yet, be sure to click on that next.